Hey guys, my name's Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, I've got an exciting one for you. I've got a good geology friend of mine who uh, brought some samples over from one of his properties. So we're gonna crush it up through our turnkey system here behind me and see if he's got any gold. And here's a quick tour of our system. This is the jaw crusher module. So I'm gonna put our samples in this hopper. They'll vibrate down through the jaw crusher, up the conveyor belt here into a fine ore bend. This magnetic feeder is going to evenly feed the material up this conveyor to our hammer mill. It's going to crush it down to about 70% passing 30 mesh and about 50% passing 50 mesh. It'll get mixed with water, feed down this little chute right here onto our shaker table. All the heavy, dense material is going to come across here under the water bar. Hopefully we see a nice little gold line here. Uh, any sulfides or galena, stuff like that, is going to work its way down here into the number two and number three. Using this aluminum splitter, we can split the cuts between the three and the four, the tailings. The tailings and most of the water is going to come down here into our spiral classifier. The large pieces of quartz and tailings are going to settle in this basin, auger up, and I'll get a little bag set up over here for the tailings. All the water and the finest material that can float in this water will go down here into our sump and we will recycle the water over and over again through the system. All right, guys, we're here with a good buddy of mine, uh, Gio, and uh, he's brought a couple samples up from one of his properties. And uh, he's gonna give us a little a little geology lesson here on what he's got. And um, I'll just kind of interview him and, and we'll see, uh, we'll get it run through the, the turnkey system and we'll see what we can get out of it. So. Um, so tell us a little bit about the rock here and um, kind of the geology and the mineralogy and <clears throat> why you think it might be a, a good sample. Okay, Jason, these, this is quartz vein material that I got off the uh, dump from this mine in the uh, uh, northwestern United States, and it is primarily quartz. There's some minor fraction of uh, sulfides, uh, galena, pyrite, a little bit of chalcopyrite, and little flecks of free gold. And that's pretty much it, a pretty simple uh, mineralogy. I would call it a mesothermal uh, quartz vein, and um, it's steeply dipping and was mined uh, for gold in the 1880s, 1890s. And um, I'm considering going back and possibly mining it again. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Can you tell us how, how did they mill it back then? Uh, they actually had a 10-stamp uh, um, uh, uh, mill, and I believe it was run over mercury plates on, on copper plates with mercury to recover the gold. Okay. And uh, there was a tram system from the mine itself that went down to a, a lower elevation near a, a small town, and that's where the mill was. And did they have, was it just gold they were after? Did they have some silver too? Or did they go after the galena and the lead? Or uh, No, it was gold uh, primarily. I didn't see any assays in silver. There is a little bit of silver associated with a galena, but not enough to, to recover. Okay. Um, but that makes the, the ore is quite simple, and it's free milling for the gold, and that's the, uh, uh, the best part of it. It, 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 it's it's primarily quartz, and the and the free milling gold is one of the important parts. Being right. able to just crush it right. and get it right. out, right. yeah, and that is the. And if you can keep it simple like that, then uh, and that's what I want to do too. Just like uh, they did at first, is just crush it and and recover by gravity uh, the gold fraction. And we were talking earlier about a little hammer mill and a sluice. So you go up there, do some testing, right. and if you can prove it up. The whole thing, the whole the whole game here with these properties is get them to produce something, a little bit. Take them, to, you know, show you got you got gold, you got something rather than just a few assays and a, you know a smile. Right, and and I'm sure in 1880 when it was first mined, they needed very high grade material to to tram down. They weren't taking any uh, any lower grade material. It just wasn't worth it. But now it's worth it at uh, at today's gold prices. And if it's already been mined then that's kind of a bargain. And, yeah. And if I can release the gold by just simple crushing and, and gravity, <clears throat> then uh, uh, might be able to make a buck. And so your your first target is these dumps or these these piles, maybe some old stock piles or things that um, 
are on site, all the work's been done, all you got to do is pick it up and throw it in the crusher. Right, and these are patented mining claims. That means it's private property. So I don't have to deal with the, at least the federal government in, in any way. Mm. And um, it's relatively easy. Uh, and I shouldn't have to get much permitting or, or any other uh, governmental approvals. Nice. And it, uh, you may have said it earlier, um, what's kind of the average grade on, on this stuff? Or what are you hoping to get out of it per ton? Uh, historically, I believe out of this one mine, they got around 7,500 ounces of gold at about three quarters of an ounce or around 20 grams per ton. And uh, the assays I've taken seem to uh, substantiate that. They're, they're, they're between a quarter to a half to a full ounce. So I think uh, the material, they did leave some of that. Uh, a lot of it is lower grade that they considered waste in, but it might be valuable now. Mm -hmm. But if I can get a half ounce of gold per ton, I'll be real happy. Cool. Well, yeah, let's get it run through our turnkey system, and we'll see what we can make out of it for you. How, how much did you bring? Do you know a couple hundred pounds, maybe? A couple hundred pounds. Okay. Yep. yep. And we'll run them as two different samples? Yeah. All right, we panned down one of our samples here, and this is the the number one concentrates. And there's, there's a lot of galena in there, so it's real heavy and kind of hard to pan, but here's what we got out of it. And what did you say, Lane, about 100 pounds, about you figured? 100 pounds. Of course, material. So that is a really nice showing of gold there. And you said this was just laying there on the dump or under the ore bin? Right. You just picked it up. There for the pickings. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right, Lane, well, I know you've seen me do this before, but we've got our number one here kind of panned out. We'll probably pan it out two or three more times. But how, how this works is I take our little snuffer bottle here. I'm going to suck up the gold as clean as I can. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100%. And just go along. Kind of sucking up the gold. Yeah, I just get it sucked up in the snuffer bottle. So there's our gold lines gone. So let me let me pan this down a couple more times. And get as much out of here as we can. And this isn't gonna get you know every last little speck. So if we if we come back with you know, half a gram, we may have missed a, a tenth of a gram or so we're getting only a percentage of the gold we can get, but it's enough to get an order of magnitude, let's say. Should we got most of it there with that first snuff? Yeah, I know, you really And it's real hard, like you said earlier, with the galena. Man, it's, yeah. The galena is so dense. There's a little bit. A little bit there left. It's always tempting to try and get all of it. No, no, and then no. you, sunk up, so you suck up a bunch of junk, and then it th throws your cupelling, right, right. cupelling process That's off. That's quite but, a yellow bee. Yeah. <laughs> in there. there we go. Okay, we'll call that good. And and again, this is just the number one. Um, but then we can take our, our little snuffer bottle here. Make sure we get all the all the gold down in there. I pull the straw out. And I just take this little blue shop towel. I don't know if you can see in the video, there's two little tiny flat nuggets we picked off the table in there. So we got those in there, but I'm just gonna take this snuffer bottle, shake the gold right down there on my finger. You can see it in the tip of the bottle there. And then I just wash it down in the bottle, bottom of that little blue shop towel there. And I'll do this a couple times. If you get a little sulfides in with it, it's not a big deal. They oxidize in the furnace. But you just get get it down there. Get 
Now we'll move on. I'm just going to wring out all the water I can. And it doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly dry, but you want as much water out as you can. And then we have all our gold down here in this little, the bottom of the shop towel. So now I take some scissors or tin snips. Oop, just cut it off of there. And now we have all our gold in our blue shop towel here. Now I take this, this is called a cupel. Typically they're made out of bone ash, or they were back in the day. But what this does is I'm going to place this in a hot furnace, get it up to about 1850 degrees Fahrenheit, take my gold pouch there, put it in there. The, the rag is going to burn off and turn to carbon. I'm going to add some uh, bismuth or lead to this. And the lead or bismuth, I'll use lead as an example, melts at a fairly low temperature and it alloys with all the gold and the silver and everything in our in our pouch here. Then as it heats up at about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, the lead oxides that form on the surface of the puddle, uh, they start to melt. And because the, the metal is a concave dome, the molten lead oxide runs off and is absorbed by the cupel. It's like a sponge for metal oxides, but the metal itself sits on the surface. It can't absorb the metal, just the metal oxides. So it absorbs all the lead oxide. If there's a little bit of copper in there, if there's a little bit of um, you know iron in there, it, all that gets oxidized and the lead oxide rolls it off into the cupel. And then when you're when you're all oxidized all the way, all the base metals, you have your gold left in a little button there in the center. So we'll go uh, get the furnace heated up and put this in there and see if we can get our little gold bead and then we'll get it weighed and figure out how much gold we got in our stuff. All right, guys, we'll take a look here. I think we're pretty much heated up. Yeah, there we go, there's our cupel. So let me take our little gold pouch here. We'll let that just burn off for about 30 seconds. And then we'll put our metal in to oxidize all that stuff away and alloy with gold. All right, we'll check on our stuff. That's still burning away. I'll leave this cracked, get the oxygen into it. All right. Grab our metal. Let's see if we can watch that melt. There it goes. Now it'll absorb all the gold and metals in the tip of that ash packet. Now it's heating up. You can actually see the, there it goes. Now the oxides are molten. Now it's doing its thing. All right, we'll check on our stuff here. Been in, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Oh yeah, there's our little bead. Oh, that is. That's coming along. That's not bad. Yeah, it's still it's still getting with some of the, yeah. the base metals out, but yeah, it'll shrink a little bit. But coming along sparkle that's right all right we'll check on our thing here i think we're pretty much done what do we got here oh yeah there's a little bead so let me get it pulled out of here Not dumping it it's still molten it'll cool down and solidify it sometimes they flash let's see if we can get the flash on camera here Blink. Oh man. There, see it? No, but 
Oh, this probably caught it. Yeah, I got it on my camera. Okay. Yeah, blinked over. So yeah, we'll let that cool down for a couple minutes. I'll we'll pull that guy out of there. Okay, so we got our thing over here. Let's pluck this guy out of here. There we go, cool it off in some water. All right, Lane, hold out your hand. Can you feel it? <laughs> Whoa, man. <laughs> oh. It's got a little bit of junk in the bottom still. That's okay. I don't think we got it absolutely 100% all the base metals out of it, but. About 0 0.28, 0 0.29. There we go. So if you if you do the math, we figured it was what two tenths of an ounce, about six mm -hmm. grams per ton. Mm -hmm. There we get it in focus. And you said that kind of jives with your assays. You were getting assays of somewhere in there. Yeah, about a quarter of an ounce per ton. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, you know, we we probably <coughs> didn't get it all. There might be a little bit we missed snuffer in, and there may be some associated with the with the sulfides, but. Uh, for bringing over a bag of rocks and turn into a gold bead, that's pretty good, huh? Oh, fantastic. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. And, Lane, thanks for bringing the sample over. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. We'll catch you on the next video, guys. <laughs>